All right, well, this one's pretty straightforward with um, manipulating the mass and seeing how that affects period. Uh, when you go to do that, um, you're just really swapping out those masses that are on the table, as you can see over here, and then just putting them on the hanger. The hanger itself is 50 grams, so you can use that as a first data point and then just keep tacking on these little 20s. And then these are 100 grams a piece, and you, so you can really get some bigger data points doing it that way. Uh, you're going to keep the angle roughly the same. It doesn't matter too much, but just try to kind of pull it back to the same height each time. Try not to exceed, you see on this line here, like no more than like 20 degrees or so. Don't swing it way up here and then let it kind of go horizontally. It should only be pulled back to be a pendulum about 15 to 20 degrees, and that will keep a good timing for you. When you go to get the period of the pendulum, you're going to kind of look for it to hit that furthest spot, let's say like out where the pen is, and then you'd start the stopwatch there, let it swing for a while so you're not um, being skewed by that starting time. So I'd let it just kind of re freely swing and then wait and then start the stopwatch when it gets out to that furthest point. So three, two, one, start, one period, two periods, three periods, four periods, five periods, and like just time five of them, five swings back and forth. That way you can average out that time interval and it'll be a little bit more accurate for you than just recording one swing back and forth. When you're all finished with that, you can go ahead and graph your data, um, plot it in Logger Pro or on paper of your choice, and then uh, look for a relationship if there is one. If you're not seeing much of a relationship, if there's not much change, it could be that there's no relationship, but you'll talk about that with other groups.